Hello and thanks for joining me. This is part two of the belt grinder build video. I'm very optimistic about the way this is turning out. Uh, I did have one technical problem. I've lost a video clip where I made this upright, this pivot arm, and a little mandrel for this roller. You may remember I already had this roller. All I did to it is cut the flanges off. So whatever you use is going to dictate how you make that mandrel anyway. But it just bolts on right there and the spring tension provides belt tension. Anyway, what we're going to do now is make a bracket for that spring and uh, build the rest of it. And let's get on with it. I think I'm going to have to cut off part of that to get enough tension. You could use a variety of different springs. This particular spring is one I had. Uh, really it needs to be a thicker spring but shorter. I mean this will work, but it's unnecessarily big. This is designed for a lot of movement. Yeah, let's see if this looks like enough tension. Maybe. Okay, the next step is to build this platened and the tool tool rest. Now this one here just a piece of stainless which is pretty good for backing up a sanding belt or grinding belt but I'm gonna make this next one out of steel and I'm gonna make it absolutely flat this one here whenever I grind something on it it would be a little bit out of square so that's the next step to make make this flatten and then the tool rest okay here's the next step I've cut some metal here two inch wide uh, by about four and a half it doesn't have to be four, it could be three, it could be whatever. But this is my plat. And I'm going to mount this back here like that. Screw that to that right there. It'll mount back here. Okay. I made it the same width as the belt. Because sometimes you want to get in, into kind of an L shape when you're grinding. And if the platen is sticking out beyond that, beyond that, you can't do that. So that'll be my platen. This will be the table. It'll mount right there. Uh, I'll put two countersink screws there and those will be countersink back there. And uh, I want to make sure I've squared this up on the mill. It's perfectly square. This is square to the pulley, so if I'm if I get this platen in there straight and I have this bolted on here square like that, I can use the front of it to uh, like a drill drill grind drill grinding jig or a cutoff tool grinder or whatever. I can lay whatever in there and move it and uh, 
guide it with the front edge of that. So anyway, got a lot of drilling to do. I gotta mark some holes there and here and then drill both these and bolt that. I'll use some uh, probably number 10, a couple of number 10 flathead screws right there. I'm going to drill that and countersink and probably grind that weld off. I just wanted, wanted that there to drill the holes, make it easier to keep lined up. Okay, that'll go right there. A couple of quarter twenty button heads will go on there. And it'll be adjustable. And I'm going to do this one the same way. Slot that right there. So it can... Well, I got a stronger spring. It's a little bit shorter. I had to move the bracket up to the top bolt. Now, got some uh, socket head screws I'm going to put in here. Socket head flat head. That way the belt won't, won't ever hit the screws. Looks nice too. Okay, I finished this up. I had that spot welded, drilled that, and then broke it apart and and uh, cleaned the weld up a little bit and put it back together. And I milled a slot in there so that I could adjust it and the screws would be uh, flush with the top. It probably didn't matter here uh, being flush. It's more for looks than anything. But on the tool rest, being flush is, a, is great because then you can rest, rest work on it and it won't hit the bolt. So the next step is to mount these. And I suppose if I was going to do it right, I would take it all apart and clamp that in my drill press or mill and then drill the holes. But I'm going to try to transfer the holes and drill them and tap them by hand with a hand drill. I don't want to take it all apart again. So, I got an idea. That hole there doesn't really have to be slotted. If you get this thing positioned exactly right, you're never going to move it again. But, exactly right is with the belt very slightly deflected. You, want it, you don't want to create a lot of extra friction. But because I'm, I got it slotted, it's not super critical. But I got it about where I want it, and I'm going to put two screw holes there. But if you're building this, you don't really have to slot that. You could make an oversized hole to give you some adjustment.
Lines up good. Well, I haven't got the switch wired yet, but we can try it out now. Oh yeah! <laughs> Alright, let's wire the switch on. Well, I'm not an electrician. Okay, there's one one last thing on my other belt sander that I never did fix, and I'm going to fix it right now on this one. I need a guard to cover this. Uh, sparks and metal come up and they sling right toward your face. So I'm going to make a guard right there. That's the only place that really needs to be guarded in my opinion. Let's uh, put this grinder to the test. Yeah, check this out. Messed up my workbench. Yeah, not too worried about it. <laughs> That's what it's for. I guess I need to put something protective underneath the grinder.
Well, there it is all done. I'm really pleased with it. My old belt grinder was a 3 inch drive pulley, 3450 motor, and the belt speed was uh, 2700 feet per minute. This one here is a 3 quarter horse with a 5 inch pulley, and it's 4000 feet per minute. I can honestly say this one takes it off, takes off metal almost twice as fast. Uh, I'm really pleased with it. But if you've got a 3450 half horsepower motor, I wouldn't hesitate to make it with a smaller pulley. Uh, half horsepower probably doesn't have enough uh, power to turn a pulley, a five inch pulley. Uh, three quarter horsepower, I have stopped it, but it takes quite a bit. Uh, but I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. If you build one, be sure and put a guard on it like that. Uh, use half inch, half inch uh, steel. Uh, I don't think half inch aluminum would be adequate, but half inch steel works a little better. You get a little better clearances in here. Uh, but use what you got. You know, I mean, I made this for it. Uh, it's really not a super difficult build. I made the first one before I got a mill. Uh, Cutting that hole for the motor mount is probably the most difficult thing. Uh, you probably could just cut a groove in the plate without boring all the way through it. You know, you could put it in your uh, four jaw chuck in your lathe and just cut a groove in there uh, and then cut a hole in the middle. Uh, you don't have to go all the way through like I did. Anyway, that wraps it up and thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe.